Hello, this is Hawker Debean, and today we are covering a new subreddit with very interesting stories called r slash entitled parents. It's not new in the history of subreddits, not even for most Reddit it's YouTubers, but it's new on this channel. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Now let's get right into this. Entitled or senile? Also, I might have picked a few too many stories. Mildly worried that anyone in my fam will see this. It would likely be my sibling, but here goes. I, 40s female, have a mom who has... Uh, I... There who has been either changing or dropping the mask as I got older. I was married, but the marriage ended in a decade over ended over a decade ago, and my ex, 40s female, and I have been co-parenting as best as we can. We both have new parent partners, and he is primarily new parent with his wife for my youngest. While me and my partner, 40s male, I thought your ex was also in their 40s and also a girl. Our primary parents my eldest, the divorce in and of itself is not an issue. It's the way she treats my kids when they're around versus how she talks about them in public. And how it feels like she's judging me and my kids. My eldest is home for a while on vacation from um, their job. We moved states last year to help with what uh, uh, we're told was a dire health emergency for my dad, late 60s. However, on arrival, agreements that were in place were suddenly null and void. And the health emergency was not the mental health emergency we were warned about, but a physical. But one that occurred several months after our arrival. We, partner and I, are used to are being used for free labor, paying half the household bills, and were actually tricked into moving so we could watch over my mom's assets and animals while she traveled for four months. The fuck? My dad didn't go, but his medical emergency meant he moved in with us until he was healed. We were supposed to be living in our current home alone, but mom declared she was selling her home and moving in with us because she's broke. Now we all live in a small place together, and my partner and I have no say over what happens at home, and he has been able to find work in the field in this field since we moved. With my eldest, she immediately wanted to change how my child, 20s, was acting and disparaging who they were at, who they are as a person. Playing about their hobbies or lack of real friends since my child hang out, hangs out a lot on Discord. And my child's sleep patterns. Yet it's called being anyone under the age of, of 40. You should try it sometime. She doesn't like my style of parenting and can't figure out my, why my child and I can be sarcastic and weird with one, uh, one another and still love each other. It's called actually caring about your parent, uh, about all of your children. It's called a parenting based on actually being a family member rather than and be, being a boss who, who instills fear in children. I should know. Me and my, my mom are very close to each other. My child had a job before they left for the, a new a career, so that we want uh, them to live at home for that brief time. But lots of signed comments and coerced labor from grandma if I dared complain, I get a lot of passive aggressive remarks. She also comments from time to time how my youngest is entitled and spoiled due to her father making more money than I did. And for me allowing my children to pick where they lived for school. She complains that my youngest chose money over their mom, which isn't true. My youngest is, has a close bond with their step-sibling. I also have a younger sibling and who has two children, and she basically says the same thing. My sibling and I are making sure it's break generational trauma with our kids. And since both of mine are legal adults and thriving, I feel we've done that well. When she's challenged on how she speaks about our children, she'll take aim at me and my sibling. I have been called lazy for not washing dishes or cooking or put away in my laundry in my room. But I work two jobs, and I do things on my schedule, not hers. She uses my partner for free labor, and she pouts when she doesn't get her way. She's also thrown temper tantrums. She didn't used to be this way. I don't know if this is who she 
he is, or if she is truly experiencing an early onset mental disability that I need to worry about as I get older. Her behavior is inconsistent, and she is on medication for, a depres for depression and anxiety. I am now as well. Should I be worried? I mean, if you're not worried, I'm worried. Because that is worrying. <sighs> Sound will come any second now. There we go. Ah, oh, no, nah, it took so long. My granddad fought L down the stairs, and it's all my fault. Hey, if you know my account, which I don't, I you know I have a few stories about my dad. No, I didn't know. Well, today was my aunt's birthday, and as you can see by the title, my grandpa fell down the, the stairs, and I feel like it's all my fault. I had my headphones on while my granny's getting something for my mom, so I couldn't hear what my little cousin, until a kid, was saying to me. He is notorious for annoying me, so I thought he was trying to get my nerves, so I tell him, okay, shut up, which I know is rude, and this is why I feel that it happens, that what happened, and is my fault, because my attitude started to fight. My aunt gives me the item and tells me, and I quoted, Don't speak to my child like that or you won't be allowed to step through that door again. My grandpa defends me by saying, She can come in if I say she can. It's my house. Thus starting a whole fight that my granny blames me for by not treating my cousin like a human being. It was so bad to the point that my aunt had slammed my grandpa's head in a, to the table because he said it was time her and her son moved out. My aunt is 37 and she spends all of her, my mother's, my granny's, and her best friend's money on nights out living in, in me with her five-year-old and not getting paid. He went to apologize to my aunt while I had left with the thing my mom needed and he had fallen down the stairs. My mother was told my granny over the phone. I don't want to tell her since I was oh, didn't want there to be an even bigger fight than there already was, and is now fuming at them saying I treat my cousin like a freaking human being, when they didn't treat me like human, plus my aunt doesn't pay any bills in the house at all, and she has a ball also to call it her house. But my mother and I had lived in that house until I was nine, and my mother has paid more of the bills than she ever has. Sorry this is long, I just felt like I needed to tell somebody about it. My mom and dad agreed. That as soon as we are aware that my granddad is okay, they'll be coming in at my aunt and my granny the same way she they came at me. Whew. Well, given that I've never, uh, that I don't know who this OP is and I don't know all any of the other stories, I feel like, like I might be missing a lot of context here. That would be a, a, a really necessary to make a better decision about this. Because coming out from just this story, it does seem like OP wasn't entering their or, um, cousin and like human being, but it could very well just be that uh, 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 there was other or uh, uh, more important details that we are completely missing in the story that OP says that we should probably look into other stories that uh, that she, you've hosted to find. So we're just gonna take this as a a we need more details and we need to find as OP's other stories in the subreddit in the future. Right now we're going to the next story. Oh dear. Okay. Parent errands at school pick up and drop off are the worst. My family and I live across the street from an elementary school for 
I had some tr time. Over the years, we've had a number of interactions with the parents. They are the epitome of entitled. Their kids are also slobs, too. I regularly find garbage food about in my yard, left by the kids, and their parents seem to not make them clean up. I was like, you are talking about an elementary school. I think of the teachers who would usually make the kids clean up in elementary school, but if you're talking about in your yard, that just seems weird. Parents let, let their kids walk through our yard and travel our flowers. Why? There is a sidewalk, so there's no excuse to let your kid wander through someone else's yard. Parents have yelled at us. We politely ask them to not step on our on our flowers. Parents block and use our driveway. Parents will park in front of the driveway, blocking access because, God forbid, they have to walk a bit extra to find and parking. They will also use the driveway to turn around instead of drive 200 feet. To a cold sack to turn around like a civilized person. My neighbor growing up almost got hit in her own driveway by an entire parent rapidly pulling into her uh, driveway to use it as a turnaround. The car missed her by a few inches. Her mom could run the irresponsible drive around the entire parent and go, Frick you! at the at my, at my neighbor's mother, along with other profanities and excuses why she's entitled to the driveway. My parents have asked other parents very nicely to not block the driveway or use the turnaround since we can't even drive to park our own vehicles. And it's not their property. Multiple other entitled parents have yelled, Frick you to my parents with their kids present as well. My mom once said, You really shouldn't talk like that around your kid. When your kid decides to swear in class, the teachers will know where it came from. Counterpoint. Kids are going to run into people who use that sort of language regardless. It's just, it's weird to try and expect people to not use that language. This set the entire parent off even more with more F-bombs and other swear words. Ooh. All because he was asked to not block our driveway. Man. Yeah, they're overreacting, but... You're putting a lot of weight on swear words. And they aren't that big of a deal unless you're a YouTube monetization. With SUVs and trucks getting bigger, these instances of blocked driveway is or poor parking happen more frequently. Most recently, the entire parents are moving our trash cans so they can take up the whole street. Our trash pickup is on Thursday a and every Thursday for the past few weeks, the trash can has moved and subsequently not collected. Either it's tipped over on the street, and the can is cracked, now, now so some idiot pro and probably hit it, or it is dragged up the driveway and next to the house. What kind of entitled old a-hole grabs someone else's full trash can, hauls it up someone's driveway, and it and just feels like they're right in their actions? Sadly, this happens when everyone is at work during school pickup at around 2 to 3 p.m., so there's no way to directly tell them to not touch our stuff. There's a note on trash can saying their park convenience doesn't give them a right to move our trash can and prevent us from getting trash pickup we pay for. TLDR entitled parents from elementary school will be hostile public menaces to all to avoid driving or walking a few hundred extra feet. <sighs> yeah, I can get that, but it seems like you're complaining about stuff that the trash can thing? Yeah, that's freaking weird. That is weird. That is not cool. Who the hell does that to someone else's stuff? That's just dumb. But the swearing? I mean, people swear all the time. It's kind of a part of English. Hell, I even swear most of the time. As you might have seen in my longer videos that get longer than 10 minutes. Oh, we're already there. <laughs> I could have been swearing. Now let's get to the next one. This one being called... Starting to Hate My Mum. Ugh. 
Uh, this is a kid. I, 17 female, I'm starting to hate my mom, 45 female. In her younger days, she did a lot of things that would implicate her health, and she has multiple health conditions already. Heart, kidney, lung, which I spend my free time helping her with because nobody else will. If nobody helps her, then she won't look out for herself, i.e. meds. If I don't prompt her to take her meds, she'll refuse because in her eyes, she's incompetent or even I've been getting a towel out of the cupboard or so picking something up off the floor. Now she's been diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, which she brought on herself with her diet and lifestyle of laying in bed and doing nothing and eating. And she had, and it's like me to check her blood sugar all the time. Check, buy, and make sure all of her food would all day and basically add that to my list of things I already do. Wash her, dry her, make her drinks and snacks what she wants, and do her shopping, laundry, and anything else she needs. God damn. And I voice asked my dad how I struggle, and I had a break time out to him due to being overwhelmed with exams, work, my own life, and then dealing with her on top. To the point where I told him I hate her because she became so insufferable one night. I also care for my brother in all of this as well and have to make him take his meds and eat every day. After I broke down, my dad started asking how I am more or, and how my, my day's been. But now my mom's been diagnosed with type 2. It's, go, it's all gone back to how, how it was. And I'll see, I'm starting to resent her for it. Am I the asshole for wanting to tell her to do things herself? She works three days a week, so she is competent, but in her eyes, as soon as she gets home, she's no longer competent. Would I be the asshole if I con cut contact with her when I move out? She constantly guilt trips me for any anything, saying that nobody helps her with anything and she can't live on her own, but she's proven she can when I'm away. I'm honestly so sped up of doing everything in the house. She also decided to buy three dogs and four cats, which I also have to feed, clean, change litters, and clean up after. And it's too much. I'm trying so hard, but am I the asshole here? I'm sorry. No, Pete, you are not the asshole. Not by I, I, a long shot, and you would not be an asshole for cutting contact and moving out. Because guess what? Your mother is 45 years old and has proven that she is competent but is literally gaslighting and guilt tripping you into taking care of her when you are literally a child. So OP, I only have one question for you. And I know you're counting. How many days until you're 18? Because that's how many days you have until you don't have to deal with this ever again. And you would uh, it'd be uh, because this is just this is just child abuse, and I'm not sure what the situation is with your father here. Where he's just like, I, I at most asking how your day's been, but it sounds like you live separately from, he lives separately from your mother, but if he doesn't, wow. But like, she needs to grow up. She is making you, the child, a parent in the a house between you two. And that is not okay for a mother to do. Anyway, let's move on to the next tab. That's actually a little upsetting. Moved 1,000 miles from away at 15 and still let my parents disrupt my life. A rant. 21 male here. My, my parents and I have a very complicated relationship. I was raised in a very small Midwest town where everyone knows everyone. When I was 12, my parents decided we should move to Tampa for better jobs. I was resistant to this because I was very comfortable and settled in my town. And uh, the moved kit had problems. I struggled with mental health and became very depressed. My parents did not handle this well, especially my dad. My parents then divorced. My dad started falling into his own depression, and my mother kept at a, kept us while he lived in, a, in an apartment. P, 
Fast forward to the age of 15. My parents both decided that since I want to move home so bad, they were going to let me live back home with my grandma. I was so excited and ready to get back to my normal life. I moved back and was still struggling with my mental health. Eventually, I met more friends and met my current boyfriend. My parents made a point to come visit me on holidays or when I was out of school, which I enjoyed because I missed them. I would try and spend as much time with them as I could with them because I felt obligated to due to us not seeing each other or much. Looking back, I don't feel like they really kept in touch with me other than occasionally calling or texting. As the years went on, I began to resent them coming to visit as a cause of disruption in my normal routine. The expectation of spending all my time with them. My boyfriend also began resenting them as they expect me to put him on the back burner to see them. My mother has gotten better about decreasing her expectations as she has other family to visit it with, but I do feel guilty still. My father only has his mom, who I lived with, to visit when he comes to town. My dad has never gotten in, in a relationship since my mom due to his unwillingness to make compromises. He will tell me he two to three weeks before he's coming and expect my life to fall into place with his schedule. Overall, he is a hot mess. My main issue is I don't know how to stand up for myself and I feel as if I'm being treated like a child still. I pay my own bills, live with my partner in an apartment, and I'm working to support myself while in nursing school. I just wish they wouldn't come and visit. I never, I've never had a spring break, free summer, or winter break. It's like we need to pack everything we have missed over the years into one weekend. It's always me calling them and trying to get attention and I feel they don't reciprocate. This is causing problems with my, rela with my relationship with my, as my partner is sick of my parents and my, and my inability to be a man about it. I don't know if anyone has any advice or any way to help me, but my co but any comment is appreciated. TLDR, parents of me away at 15, but I'm starting to act like their perfect child. I don't know to set major boundaries with them because I feel bad for some reason. No, you need to set major boundaries. You need to set at at boundaries with everyone. You everyone has boundaries. You have to set them, and you have to make them clear. <sighs> All right. Comments are pretty much on, with me. Therapy and um, setting boundaries, and also looking for advice in a, a subreddit called r slash raised by narcissists. Although I'm not sure if I if, if the first idea of advice that I would give someone would be go check out a subreddit. Me, it would probably be go to therapy. It's for the best. If you talk to someone who can actually help you explore why you can't say no or set a boundary with these with, with your parents. Anyway, to the next story we go. Okay. My sister, 13, sleeps with my mother, 48, in the master bedroom, sharing the bed sharing the same bed. While my father has been sleeping in the living room for 15 years. My father preferred to build a garage extension rather than expand our living space. Okay, this is uncomfortable for me. I get it. A lot of kids like to sleep with their, their parents up to a certain point. But 7 is a cutting off point. At the latest. Most people do it when they're like, like, like toddlers and stuff. Like when, and, and you're able to go a night without sleeping with your parents, without uh, 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 screaming for food in the middle of the night or screaming because you uh, uh, wet your diaper or whatever. That's when you get your own, 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 own crib in the same room. And then once you're able to talk and move around, you get your own room. 
And at 7, you don't spend nights with mom unless you're really, really sick. And that's it. So, still sleeping with your mother, still sleeping in the same bed as your mother is uh, really bad for a child's um, development. And can lead to what I would consider to be emotional incest. <sighs> well, let's get this moving along. My parents claim they don't have enough space for my 13-year-old sister to have her own room. It's not as if they could have foreseen this before having a third child. So my mother, 48, shares a massive bed bedroom bed with my sister while my father continues to sleep in the living room. And to add to the absurdity, my father decided to, ooh, the same year, he had his third child to build an extension to the garage instead of expanding the living space. Such stupidity cannot be made up, can it? Sounds like something a little bit sus is going on here. This is yet another example of how clueless my parents are about parenting. While I'm not a psychologist, it's probably not ideal for a child of development to spend 99% of her, her day attached to her mother's side and uh, unable to do anything alone. So I ask myself the following questions. Why would someone have three children if they didn't even have enough space for them all? Well, isn't it something that he'd rather have room for eight more cars and give his daughter her own space? <sighs> yeah, that's weird. And that's kind of a self-censored thinking. And I feel bad for your sister because I don't know what sort of situation and she's in and I don't want to know. Oh, wow, there are a lot of comments here. Why? Oh yeah, since he's been sleeping with in the living room for, for 15 years, I doubt it has anything to do with your 13-year-old sister. It's so weird. Anyway, let's go to the next one. Oh, I think this one is a little bit of um enforcing gender roles, which are which is kind of gross. My mom threw out threw out all of my coziest clothes because she thinks they are lowering my feminine energy. So basically she's trying to enforce gender roles on you. That's disgusting. She bought a new wardrobe for my room. When I came back to home, I saw she already put my clothes in it. So I just thanked her and her and stuff. Then I realized none of my favorite clothes were there, so I asked her about it, and she said, I don't know anything about it. They're probably in the laundry bag. Uh, uh, and I didn't mind about it. A week passed, my clothes still were missing, so I asked her again. She said, those ugly clothes are lowering in your feminine energy and confidence, and that I can't find any guy to like me with those clothes. Girl, I am a romantic. Even if I wasn't, I do not want anyone who just cares about my clothes. She threw out almost everything that now I have to, like, three to four things to wear at home. I just can't stand it. It's so short that I see the first comment. Go throw oh, a bunch of her stuff away. Her key, perhaps, is driving a big machine. Isn't driving a big machine too masculine? Want to bet it will be a case of rules for Diva, not for me. For OP, e, OP, move out if you can. Otherwise, lock up everything you value because nothing is safe from her. Oh, sorry for broken English. No, don't worry. <sighs> I understood it. Anyway, yeah, this, you need to ooh, 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 move out. This is just a bad parent. Don't throw away people's stuff. It's just not cool. 
I had a step that and I did this and it just was not okay. I really like this one stuffed animal too. Anyway. This has been r slash entitled parents. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I have no idea what I'm going to be doing tomorrow, so until then, goodbye!